And voila! Voila! I'm all ready. Good morning. Hey, is that Tom? Good morning, Tom. Who? Oh, what a week. Not really. I say that every week, but really this, these, since surveillance mode has been not too bad. So, uh, I caught up on three more episodes of your podcast yesterday. Oh, yeah? What would you think? Oh, well, they're going fine. It's, and it's weird because, like I said before, I me mean, going through this, you know, and I'm learning a lot more of what it was like for you and Tanya than, than I knew. I mean, sitting at home, you know, going through this with you from my perspective, it's completely different from you know y'all's extremely personal perspective. Yeah, and it's just Grace and I are still learning a lot by by listening to these podcasts. Yeah, it's um it's been a been a good therapy for us. Um, oops, you might switch to the other link. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. So it, it's been a the podcast has been a very therapeutic for us. Right. We're able to, she's able to see my side of it, and and I'm able to see her side of it. Mm-hmm. So where she thought I was just being an ass and being grouchy and difficult, there was actually feelings and reasonings behind that. So then it made, then she sees where she was kind of rough and gruff and whatever that I took it as right where, where really, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't intended that way. So it's been able to, we've been able to hash out some of our differences with that. And, uh, um, you know, just kind of really just not like therapy. I mean, we're just talking it out and, you know, hopefully it'll help somebody else. I mean, because I don't know one, how to tell somebody nobody knows how to react around right. when you first tell them um you don't know like we did we talked about the information you could google it and your mind's blown well, i know you know and <laughs> everybody when knows made, when you made the first phone call to me and to let me know what was we hung up i went to google and i'm like oh shit, he's gonna be gone in a year yeah and that's what <laughs> my brother said you got six weeks and i was like whoa 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Back up, buddy, you know, and it's like, back, back off, hold on. It's not good, but I don't know where yet. Uh, the kids still need a lot from me, so. Right. So, but that's where it's kind of like, oh, don't drop that. <laughs> I'll catch it. Jeez. Maybe it'll cut off that big toe with the tumor. Jeez. Yeah, that's, that's my big bear knife. Yeah, I saw your edging. Um. Wow. Yeah, we might have to slide you on down. <laughs> uh, so we do have new hats. Way to make a, a more sentimental, serious conversations. Well, I mean, it's it, it's a it's something I've been living with, and I just, as Rusty knows, I don't have much. Filter. Daddy, you never had a filter. That's just. Because. And I just kind of go with it, and I, I'm pretty much an open book, and I say what I think, and I think. No, I don't think the more I say. <laughs> and, uh, and there's been hard feelings, and you know, they call me out on it, and that's what's supposed to happen, because um, it takes too much for me to think about what I say before I say it. Uh, anyway, that's enough rambling. So, what we got going on is we're going to do a variation of a Reuben. Plans changed, and her birthday is actually the day after St. Patty's Day. So, that's her favorite holiday. And um, so, we were going to do a St. Patty's Day cook for her birthday, but since Think plans change. She's not here. We're doing it anyway because I want to Reuben. So I got a corned beef brisket right here. 
Charlie, what's up, brother? I got yes, a... it looks like a leprechaun with like green hat and red beard. <laughs> Way back. That's a lep thing. I'm the leprechaun. Uh, so I got what, a what movie with that with leprechaun. leprechaun with the name. Yeah, they had like I don't know Leprechaun Twenty Eight. <laughs> I think it was. But uh, anyway, so we got a corned beef brisket the other day. It's like three pounds. I got it for fifteen bucks. Um, yesterday, about noonish, I put it in a big pot of water, let it soak, drain it about five o'clock, change the water, let it soak to about nine. 30, 10 o'clock, drained it, let it soak overnight some more. And that what that's doing is pulling that brine out of there so it's not so salty. This is a very salty, briny piece of meat if, and you, I, if you don't do that. Yeah, and I did it for two reasons. He doesn't like corned beef when it's corned beef. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of stuff here I don't like today. I don't like corned beef. I don't like Swiss cheese. <laughs> I don't like Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> So this is not a rusty cut. Maybe next week. <laughs> uh, so I did fajitas last week. I'm good. Yeah. So so we're doing this this little spin, and uh, we got instead of rye bread, we're going to try our Mike Keto Mike's rye chocolates. I don't like rye. So what what do you have fennel to put in it or something? Caraway seeds. Caraway, I meant. Yeah. And we'll just have to make. One with no caraway. That's one of the biggest things that I don't like about. You could go and you buy like a frozen lasagna or something like that from the grocery store. I have to check the ingredients to make sure that there's no caraway in it. My brother's the same way. I don't know why. He and I both. I don't know if it's the way we grew up, the way mom and dad cooked, and, and certain things they did and didn't use. But me and my brother, neither one, we can't stand caraway. No caraway seeds, no cilantro, <laughs> no, <laughs> no Swiss cheese, no tom no raw tomatoes. No, the list just goes on and on. It would be easier to name the things that he likes. <laughs> hey, that's what y'all say about ooh. Uh, so, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to heat up the. I got a large egg drop. Can y'all see that? There you go, Phil. No. Yo. Yeah. There we go. Egg. The egg drop is right here. And it's a three notch. One, two, and three. Three notch lodge. Um, so this is 80s, 90s model. So we'll cook the uh, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut and onion in this. <laughs> Sauerkraut's another one. <laughs> so he's not eating none of this, but that's okay. I will. I will take a bite, <laughs> and then we're gonna we'll cook the uh, corned beef on the flat top. So let me go ahead and slice up the onion, and you want to slice up the uh, corned beef there. Yep. So. Cub, how was your week? Busy. Did you yeah. sell a lot of ice cream this week? Yes. I also, um, I've won a lot of ice cream this week. We can we can honestly say mean people suck. <laughs> and, and the nicest, most nicest words possible, yes. The amount of entitled individuals that are coming in. Because dad typically just like comes after work like to pick me up. And so he's like, How was work? And I'm like, Oh, let me tell you. And then he's like, At this point, I just need to come sit there. Because a lot of people come in and they're either like really stoned or they're really drunk and then they think that they have that they are the most drop dead handsomest person to walk in and not ever needs to praise them. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how my week goes. At work, at least. Yeah. But I get paid next, I get paid this week, so. Payday is always good. It very much is. 
and I'm just doing kind of a rough chop. So I want some kind of bigger pieces. And I'm just doing thin slices. <coughs> they, they'll go through and they'll cook a lot faster and <clears throat> have a lot of you know, surface area there to get the crust. If you're going for the crust, if not, it's still a whole lot better, I think, personally, for thin slices than thicker slices. I've gotten caught in four times this week. Yeah. And last week, so my 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 potatoes should be good. They they kind of told me she was the go-to when somebody called out. Yeah. Is that good? I don't know. But then when I was like, when I was like, hey, I don't, I don't want to come in tomorrow. They're like, well, we could give you a warning, um, three warnings, and you, you're done. But I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I work more hours than anybody here. So. I think Mama took my lighter. Did she? I think she did. Oh, I'm not what will the we need next to uh, work on a little sharpening of this over here. Customers do suck, but it even sucks when they decide to throw something on you and then you end up wearing it for the rest of your shift. Side of the thing, other side. Damn kids. I know, right? This is gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that was all right. Yep, since hairs. Learn from your mistakes. It's not a mistake, you, it's a necessity. Learn from your bone hair. You want me to slice up this whole thing? Or, yeah, I think we what cousins? Yeah, okay. Oh, so I'm gonna make it all up. Oh, okay. Oh, jeez, pizza's on there. <laughs> Take a robot, put it on there or something. Well, they, that's how they do it, guys. Yeah. Worked customer job long enough as a team to make it music. Literally, pickles. Dad, are you struggling today? I, I struggle with it. Some days worse than others. Mm hmm. So, how's your week been, Rusty? It's been all right. Tommy went on his first, I say, I mean, it's not his first trip with friends, but the first time that he got him an airplane ticket, flew to Ohio, spent a week with some of his buddies, and you know, he, he had a good time, but... As a uh, non-thinking 22-year-old, one week wasn't long enough for him. And so he decided he wanted to go ahead and stay another week. Oh. And so he called, and, uh, well, excuse me, his friend that he was staying with called Teresa. And, and said, what's her name? Uh, what the was friend. His, his name was Noah, I think. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say it's probably because of a girl. It was one of, it's his video game buddies that he does all of his video gaming with. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And um, called and actually asked permission. Hey, is it okay if Tommy stays another week? <laughs> I'm like, no, he's not 
12 anymore. I mean, he's 22. All he had to do was call and say, hey, I'm going to stay. But whenever Noah called, Teresa said, look, no, because this was Friday. And Teresa said, he's got to be at work at 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. You know, he can't stay another week. And so Tommy was going to go ahead and call his boss and say, hey, I can't come in this weekend and stay in Ohio for another week. And then Teresa said what she thought about it. Then I got on the phone immediately and sent him a text and told him what I thought about it. And he still took it upon himself to say, the heck with it. I'm going to stay another week. He called and he canceled his airplane ticket for his ride home. <laughs> then he goes to send Teresa a text and says, even though he knows that he was already talking about it, just miraculously, his flight got canceled. Oh, miraculous. Yeah. Um, said that there was so much snow on the ground, it was snowing really bad, and his flight got canceled. So, Teresa was getting ready for work, and she tells me this on her way out the door to work. And I said, really? That's strange. What a coincidence. And so, I take his flight number, and I punch it into Google just to see what's going on. And boarding is on time. Departure is on time. Arrival is in <laughs> His flight was from Ohio to Baltimore and then Baltimore to Charlotte. And it's like, there's no delay or cancellation anywhere. And so I sent him a text and I said, I hope you know that it's just as easy for your boss to see this information as it is for me. I said, what's going on? And then he, he, he called me and um, I was working with a, the client. So I couldn't answer the phone. And then he texted. He said, whenever you get a chance, you know, call me. I need to talk to you. So he called. I called him. And he says, I didn't tell Mama the flight got canceled because of the snow. I just said my flight got canceled and it is snowing. But it looked the so, way uh, he texted it. So it was a play on words. Exactly. Dad. What's up, little Eric? How you doing, my but friend? But then he uh, he told me, he said, Dad, I really messed up. He said, I've, I've got to get back home today. I said, okay. I said, you canceled your, your ticket. Hey, you're on your own boat. Buy another ticket. I don't, have I don't have any money. Well, then you're stuck in Cleveland. And so we went through all this. I know a fellow you can call and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we went through and... The friend that he was staying with said that he would buy him an airplane ticket because no, he, he, he just he knew he had to get home for work. Well, what well, neither one of the because he's only you know, same age or so. I mean, they're not very knowledgeable in areas of flight tickets or anything and didn't realize if you try to buy a ticket the same day you need to leave cost you more it cost you five times more than the ticket you bought a month ago yep and so what ticket what the ticket was 75 dollars or whatever now was 249 and so then tommy's friend said oh i can't get you, you know buy another yeah. ticket and so then Tommy called me back. I called Teresa to let her know what Tommy had done. And then I went ahead and I, he said, I said, how much? Because he gets paid on Friday. Right. And I said, well, how much do you have? He said, I got $75. I said, that okay. ain't enough, son. I, said, You're stuck. I sent him $200 oh. so he could buy his. Because, first of all, I wanted so bad to do what you're saying. To say, it's your fault. You screwed up. Yep. Deal with it. Yep. But at the same token, I don't want him to get fired and lose his job, especially when he finally got one that he can you know, work and not damage his work on to worry about his feet and stuff. So I told him, I said, look, I will send you this money. When you get paid Friday, you give me back the money. And what? so we went through all of that. Then he got on the plane ticket, you know, got the ticket, and he was all happy. He was excited. He wasn't going to get rode up at work. Gets on his plane, flies from 
um, Cleveland to Baltimore. While he's after he lands at Baltimore, he gets a text on his phone from the Southwestern Airlines. Your flight to Charlotte has been changed to eight o'clock Saturday morning. Oh man! And after he's done gone through all of this, and then well, he's, he's sitting, let that be a lesson that you can't. You try to do multiple wrong things and try and lie and cover it up. You well, try you, you tried to get out of lie to get yeah. out of work so you can stay at home. You 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 told part truths right that made it seem like it was a lie to your mama and then you don't have the money to to fix your mistake. Exactly. So then you're stuck and you're 22 years old. I'd have been, my, my dad would have said, hey, you're stuck. Well, you, you effed it up. You would have you're stuck. That and that's so bad what I wanted to do, but I didn't want him to end up getting fired from this job. And, and you've told me many times that me and Teresa, we are way too freaking lenient what? on our kids and we do too much stuff on so, them. So, like we were talking through this podcast, the big thing that I keep telling the kids is what's going to happen if I'm not here? That That is a true statement. I, 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 I mean, I went through this with Pay a lot to, this week. Right. If I'm not here, how, are, how would he, if, if you're not here, how's he going to bail himself out? Exactly. If your wife doesn't have extra two hundred dollars laying around what's he gonna do so let me finish this oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry that's fine i'm sorry he gets to baltimore he gets the text from southwestern he sends you know, screenshots and sends it to me and Teresa. this time his flight really was canceled and he's done gone through all of this hassle when he his regular original flight would have landed at uh 1 30 in the afternoon friday afternoon See. so he, here it is now Call Seven up. o'clock Friday night, and his flight actually was canceled. Now, whenever he um, canceled his airplane ticket, you know he got an email from the airline. You no, know, this and their flight was canceled, and I had a cancellation ticket. He screenshotted that email and sent it to his boss for proof that his plane, his flight, was canceled. Because now you're kind of like that boy that cried wolf, and right, and now he. Tells his boss, look, I got another ticket. I'm going to be at work on a Saturday morning because he had to be at work at 7 o'clock this morning. But then his flight actually truthfully got canceled. And he's done lied about it, sent his boss the cancellation text. Now he then said, that I am going to be there. Now he's actually been canceled. And then I pull up the flight that he was going from Baltimore to Charlotte. And I'm saying, Tommy, I'm looking at it right now. This flight's got a 35 minute delay. I said, You're landing. <clears throat> he, his flight landed at 7 15 because it was, it was delayed leaving Cleveland. And uh, Baltimore to Charlotte left at 7 30. So they canceled his ticket because you know, his flight was late and the other plane was going to leave before they got back. Well, lo and behold, something was wrong and that flight was delayed. And I said, Tommy, I'm looking at it right here. This flight is on a 35 minute delay. You're landing at 713. If you get off your ass and you bust your nuts, you can get from gate C to gate A, whatever, and you've got time to get on the plane. I said, don't sit there on your butt and just say the heck with it. I said, because if, if you do that, you are going to be stuck in the airport for the entire night until your flight leaves at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning because you got no money for a cab. Or Uber to get to a hotel, no money for a hotel, no money for a cab or whatever to get back to the airport, no money for food in the airport. I said, You're gonna be stuck until eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So he gets off the plane, runs through the gates and stuff, and he said that he got there, the gates, everything was already closed, and the customer service counter took his ticket, scanned it, and said, Okay, you're good, go, go, go. And they opened up the door and let him on. He said that he made it by the skin of his teeth. So we got him home. The little air at 9:30 Friday night, so he could go to work and be at work this morning on time. Little air. 
let this be a lesson. Always tell the truth. Love your mama, but never lie to her. Never exaggerate the truth. Always be honest. Karma will get you. Yes. I feel like that's so funny to me. Because ah. the whole the time that he was there, he was Snapchatting me and Pete. And we were like, you're dumb. Like, you you were not thinking at all. Any clue. Oh, he told y'all what he did? Well, he told us part of, parts of it. And we were made, and then, but like, what we have to remember is, I work from 2, 3, to 10, 11. So I'm sleep deprived. I'm done with people. So when I get home and I'm sitting in my room and Peggy listening to whatever music she's in the vibe for, last night it was sad songs, the night before it was country, whatever. And we'd just be snapped, like opening snaps. And I'm like, Peggy, did you, did I read this right? And she goes, he's a dumbass. Hold <laughs> on. And then she opens her phone and looks at it. <laughs> <coughs> But it, it was a, an, an exciting oh. day, Friday, and oh. it's, it, I mean, it's stuff that's so simple. And, I, and I, whenever I called him, I told him, I said, you had the whole week with your friend in Ohio. You knew going there. You planned this week around your work schedule. So you got off Monday afternoon. You didn't have to be back at work until Saturday morning. So you planned this week. You knew when you had to be back. And spending a week with your friends wasn't good enough. I said, what's your friend going to No, Teresa told him, if you lose this job and get fired because of this dumbass mistake, I hope your friends are going to let you move in with them in Ohio because you're going to be getting out of my house. <laughs> but she did. She threatened to kick him out and make him move we in. We know she's gonna, she would not do I that. Know. But y'all, but dad it just, would. It was something... And don't get me wrong, he he realizes how bad of a mistake it was, how how much he messed up, and he kept telling me, you know, over and over, that, you know, thank you for letting me have the money. I'm sorry for doing this. He apologized to Teresa. I mean, he really did feel bad, or at least acted really well that he felt bad yeah. about it. Yeah, I always feel bad until the next day, and I got away with it. But uh, um, he. He was texting me, and I could, when reading the text, I could feel the desperation. You know, like, how am I going to get home? What am I going to do? You know, and, and I'm like, you did this to yourself. Yeah. Me personally, you should have just left it. I couldn't. I, and I, I, I get your side. I mean, I wanted to. You know, and Teresa both. And I tried to be the hard ass because, I'm, I mean, I look at it, and, and I have to now. If I'm not here, what would you have done? If you were in that situation, leave me. I'll figure it out. You know, I put myself there. If if I'm not here, how are you going to do it? And that's where, you know, I've been I've been instilling them since all this cancer stuff happened. That information. I'm like, think of it like this: when you guys go out, go have a good time. But if things go sideways, you got to have a backup plan. Right. And like I was talking to mom, and dad doesn't know this, so surprise. Oh, um, well, thankfully, dad, I have a gift for dad coming this week, but oh. he knew, he knew about that, whatever. But she's trying to butter me up. Yeah, I am. Um, I am in the making. I'm possibly going on a senior spring break trip. Right, but <laughs> the kicker is. I, we're not going to like the beach or anything. There's a possibility that I'm going to go to USC Columbia and I'm going to be at my friend's like apartment, aka Courtney's apartment. Um, and then we're going to have like a couple, like a couple days at the beach or whatever. But mom was like, oh, you're going to be at, you, you're trying to go to a college for spring break. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be off the campus at someone else's like apartment and because mom and dad know who she is like they like her and i know what happens at college on spring break i'm not stupid yeah like i know like no one's stupid here um yeah. mom was like are you gonna go to a party i was like well after a whole yes, incident there's gonna be parties there's gonna be solo cups there's gonna be probably 
alcohol infused fruits. There's going to be jello shots. I understand. There's all that stuff there. There's going to be the edibles. The you got to watch out for the roofies and the and all the ecstasy and all that. None stuff. of us are going to parties. We're but, sitting in her room. I mean, <laughs> I went to the colleges for the weekend, so I know what happened. But she's like, I yeah, went, me too. <laughs> I was in college. I know what happened. <laughs> Well, she had. I visited more college than what I actually attended. <laughs> she had a incident where somebody spiked her drink at an actual party. Yeah. So she doesn't go to parties anymore. She literally has Facetimed me, and she's been in her like her room in her apartment doing VR parties with. She is in her pajamas, looking like a little mole rat, and nobody knows her name or where she's at. It's just. A virtual with characters and stuff and i was like okay like, i don't care like it's spring break let's do it so that's my possibility for spring break and i'm very excited and i was and mom looked at me and she was like if you guys go and drink just be safe do not go anywhere and i was like no of course not of course not. i'm not stupid yeah growing up my the, the Especially thing that i was always told know. is if you get arrested don't call us until the next day yeah. Even if I did get arrested, I'm not calling you, Dad. I, mean, that was, I don't call. That was the thing was, don't call us until the next day because we're not you getting any off <laughs> the next day. It's like, I would, I would so me and, my, me and Reagan, we've already said that if we get in jail, we're calling Mr. Kerr. Mr. Kerr goes out of school and he's a lawyer and like he's going to law school and stuff so he looks like he's from in Charlotte. But he's also a sub teacher, and we say he we gonna call him. He gonna get us out. And he said, if I get a call from y'all, I'm gonna leave y'all in there. So I'm using some Uncle Steve's competition cow powder. Okay, a little more pepper heavy, and I like it. So I think it'll go good with with this stuff here. Yeah, I've got the. Great, Carrie, great you surprised me, Shotty. Carrie said, "Okay, hold on, we gotta catch up real quick." Um, Tom said my backup plan is to call Charlie. He's so kind and compassionate, he'd give me his last dollar. Pickle said, cheer, I'm a sucker. Kay said, love edibles. He, 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 he. Yeah, um, Pickle said, watch out for fentanyl and that zombie drug. Sounds good. Yeah. See, I, I would call Charlie, but again, I don't have his phone number, so. By yeah, the time he, I. By the time he answered my, uh, my Instagram message, I'd already be on, on bail. Um... Fentanyl <laughs> is a very, very scary drug. The zombie drug. Did you know that, Dad? So, you know how fentanyl is like rated one of the top drugs that kill people like instantly? Yeah. Yeah, like if you get your thing laced with fentanyl, you're dead. Yeah. So, the zombie drug is actually three times worse than fentanyl. Okay. Did you know that? No. Oh. I don't keep up with my <clears throat> narcotics like I should. Uh, hey girl, yeah. it's. I didn't get out of college and out of the army. I don't keep up with the drugs anymore. Yeah, that's that's one of the things you know I never. Hey girl, it's really... really good for pain. Isn't it? Okay, Dad. Now Carrie's trying to put us to give you on edibles. Mom and I talked about it. You know. I, I know mean, exactly if, who you could go to. If, <laughs> if it was one of those that that was part of my treatment, it's like an option. I'm looking at it. I just walk into my son's room, reach over on his desk, grab one. Not okay. even that. I'm talking about your son-in-law too. Your daughter. Oh, yeah. cool. I feel well, like they could give you the good one, Dad. I don't know. I mean, it, we talked about it, but I mean, it, fortunately, I'm doing good, and I've been walking every day, every other day. Uh, the kids downloaded this uh, app on my phone. I guess I, it's Samsung has it. It's a pedometer. It's like yeah, a so it tracks your steps and all that stuff. So I got that. So I've been doing anywhere from a mile to a mile and a quarter every other day with the dogs. Okay. Even yesterday in the rain. Carrie said, I just got my medical card. It's worth it. Because you can get mail, but you can get medical mail on it, which isn't illegal. If you got the card and you get arrested for it, you, they you can't really charge you for it. Depends on how much you have. Okay, yeah. If you if have you, the medicinal If you amount, have a lot, fine. then you're good. And they're, uh, North Carolina is supposed
supposedly fixing to go to being legal for medical marijuana. My whole thing about um, it was, even if it's legal, the job still said not. Nah. Exactly. So, yeah, it may be legal. You can get by with it, but if you got in, like drive a forklift, then you got into an accident with the forklift, and they did a little scan, and they say, "Oh, wait, you know, they send you in for the test, and it comes back, and you're like, oh, it's this or this. It doesn't matter." You're still under the influence driving company property. I remember I was in, in Charlotte at a red red light in my company truck, you know, going to a client, and a lady hit me from behind, and I was in the accident, but I was hit from behind. The lady was you know faulted for the accident. It was all her fault. They still made me take a drug test because I was in a company vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't no smoke or do any of that stuff anymore i mean that stuff's you know 30 years out of my system but if i would have i could have you know lost my job and stuff for being hit in the back by another lady because i still had to take a drug test yep carrie said you can have one ounce of personal very true but it depends on the strand also um she also said but you can't drive with it or on it um, they've had me on every different medication for pain, and I never do this. That's good. And I'm probably the same thing if you're taking close to the sky pain because the job is full as high as high. Doesn't matter how. This is looking good. This is looking good. Onions are tra getting translucent. Some of them are still turned down so it's going on the cook just yeah. a little bit. Um, let's check out the old chef's tent. I like this thing. I do. Well, I, pop. I do like this little little thermometer. <laughs> oh, and I'm also, I have plans this weekend. Uh oh. Yeah. I don't know if I like this. You wait until the live to tell me all the stuff. Yeah, because sometimes you just don't be listening to me. Well, that's true. So then I just wait until the live. Well, I can just tell both people at the same time. Oh. Yeah. I don't work this weekend. I'm off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm going to a friend's house Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm very excited. these little are Why are they cutting more? When the time right. People said, just say I can't drive the forklift. I'm stoned. Find a forklift. A designated <laughs> forklift. Driver. Yeah, boss. Yeah, not today. I'm I'm pretty stoned. Yep, and then they escort you off. They don't come back. I've been smoking that like Zah. Oh, buddy, 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 buddy. Right, throw a few more pieces on. What do I, what do, I do with my hands? Here, put a few more <laughs> pieces on. But me and my best friend Reagan are going to this other person's house. And I'm very excited. Hey, y'all like, can't see the chocolates here. And like a week after. I'm going to the U.S. When you're bringing this raw meat over to cook product, it'll cook. It'll heat up. It's just beef. It's not like chicken.
Okay, so in here, I have, I don't know, a big, a big handful of cheese. It's the five blends, the Italian and one egg. So we'll mix that up. I got my chocolate irons over here heating up. Uh, and now what makes it rye, caraway seeds. No, we're not doing pork chops and sauerkraut. We're doing Rubens. Now, I didn't see how much Mike put in, so he just kind of guessed made it roughly a teaspoon and a half. So that's about what I'm doing. About that much. Just enough. Just enough to make rusty puke. <laughs> I'm just glad that the smells are overpowering the uh, fragrance of the caraway. What is caraway? A seed. I might add, add just a hair more. Man, I used to know what. That's Charlie. Yeah, somebody Google it for us real quick. I forgot. Charlie. What is caraway? And don't just say it's a seasoning. I need a like dumbified version, please. Hi, Scotty. Scotty's backyard. Yeah. Hey, Scotty, how you doing, buddy? He's got a new pick coming. Yeah, I'll be watching. Again, I, I think it's funny how Dad knows everything about his little YouTube peoples. And I can't remember your birthday. I know. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I tend to watch a lot of YouTube on, on the TV. So I don't comment. So apologies to anybody that is offended that I don't comment. I've been watching Scotty for a while. He'd be cooking in the snow when he's up in uh, Minnesota there. Caraway is a form of thin nail. Fennel. Fennel. Oh. Hey. Well, what is it? Why do you not like it? The taste. What does it taste like? You're fixing to find out. Oh. We're at about yeah. 175. I mean, Teresa likes it. I mean, it's, it's just my personal taste. It's just like cilantro. Is it I like can... crunchy? No, crunchy's not a flavor. Crunchy's a texture. It's the actual flavor of it that I don't like. Oh. But but it's just I mean it's just me. Look, Tommy, Tamara, Teresa, they like it. They have no problem with it. I just personally don't like the flavor. Just like black licorice. Whenever I open up a bag of jelly beans, I gotta pick the black ones out and throw them away because I cannot stand to have a black jelly bean. So here's my chocolate setup. Okay. Not being racist against the jelly bean. I Power just, strip in the back. Anyways, I'm on with that to cut, cut off your before you stick your foot in your mouth. <laughs> or a knife so, at this point. Yeah. So I got the chopper set up. I got the power strip in back that runs over to the power strip over yonder. Why These are nice and like hot. That? Why did I do that? Because you just want to make us realize. Yes. So <laughs> this is Craig's favorite. Skull. It's mine too. We were at uh, Sam's Club yesterday and they had a three pack of each. Just a little bit in your head. <coughs> they had a three pack of each. It has little wolf irons. One was an Easter bunny. Yeah. It tastes just like it's. <laughs> one was an Easter bunny and one was a four leaf clover. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, and mom said, no. You have plenty. This looks like both these. It's a seed. Doesn't it not remind you of both these? Okay. Okay. If it tastes like rye, like like my man Mike and Tom say. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. Then I'm, I'm all down for it. We'll set those off here. Hold them down for a sec. Okay, then we'll come back. Come back to the. Come back to the meats. 
Yeah, um, when I was making those at the house and teaching Teresa how to make, because she likes them, you know, showing her how to uh, how to guess on how much to put in there, you know, because it is so easy, especially when the cheese melts, it just bubbles over the side and makes a mess. You really got to be careful of the of the portion that you put in there. About half. Oh, Dad, guess what? So if you do. Okay. If you do like I do, a big handful of cheese, it's about a cup, a little over, right around there, and then one egg, that gets you, if you cut it right in half, that'll get you two of them, and you shouldn't, shouldn't over, overdo it. But sh showing Teresa, I mean, having her, you know, showing her to put a, a majority of it in the center, so whenever you close it, it spreads out, because she was wanting to fill up the whole thing like a pancake and then closing it and I said well the pressure the cheese has to go out somewhere and it goes out the side but that Scott, was, Scotty said it stays into the snow today be going out snow blowing again ooh. okay my husband's on a weight loss journey I thought, taught him that I thought I thought that would be a good thing to for him they're talking about chicken bread oh so, y'all remember the um, Kevin and Cam, Cam Lula, let try that again. Kevin and Man Kitchen Recipes did a chicken crust pizza, and then we did our, like, three-ingredient chicken nuggets, right? So, Pay and I um, broke out the lodge skull pan. And we were going to do kind of like a, well, basically like a pizza pocket, but inside it was buffalo chicken and blue cheese. At the time, and I should have paid attention, but my sugar was low. So I wasn't thinking clearly, so I just kind of rushed through it and didn't cook it long enough, so it stuck all over the place. So lessons learned, but for perfecting, we're going to work on this a little bit more. But um, chicken crust. So we did basically a pot pie kind of thing. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. I, I, I enjoyed it. It needs a little more work, obviously, but hey. Because I came home and mom's like, I was like, where's dad? And she was like, oh, oh, you sure saw it. And Peyton's like, he put this and this and this on the food processor and they got max and would it go. But no, yeah. nobody could say anything because he had so, to figure it so out. So Carrie will understand this. So I had an issue with... Lee, the, well, I never thought of a chicken pizza crust. Huh? I never... Carrie said she never thought would have thought about a pizza crust. So, so Carrie will get this. I had a problem with the insurance with trying to get my freestyle Libre. And <laughs> this they, is funny. They, um, <coughs> the insurance, the doctor said, yeah, go ahead and get it. But the insurance said, no, we need, we need uh, something from the doctor. So the doctor sends it, and then the insurance says, oh, no, you have to upgrade to the two or three. But we're not giving you the... We're not giving it to you, so they have to approve it. So the doctor had to go through all this PS to get it approved. But anyway, so I got the new Freestyle Libre 3. And it tracks on your phone, not on a scan. So, man, the first day, you know, I'd get it hooked up. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. It's continuous monitor. But, you know, you put in kind of notes where you're... You know, like if you're spike, you can put in a note, hey, I had lunch at this time, whatever. And because my thyroid's still high, my sugar numbers are running high. So where a normal 120 would be, I'm at a 170. And that's just because my thyroid's messed right. up. So where I should be in the 150s to 180s as a norm, when we were doing this chicken pizza crust, it was like a 119. So 
So I was, no. So, and I didn't, I was thinking, hell yeah, I'm back normal. You know, this is awesome. And then I was like, later on, like the next day after I ate and I felt better, then I was like, oh. Carrie said, Lee, do you use Uncle Steve's bird powder, but that's the best for even gone ticket? Yes, I do like the Uncle Steve's bird powder. I don't know. I got the competition bird shape. That's it. Oh, okay. That's it. I think it's funny. I know Dad said something like, we were somewhere. We were at the house, I think. We were going to go to school. And he goes, his, like, alarm. He said about how his alarm for his app, his we sell a great one off. He was like, we need to turn this thing off. We got to turn this off. Because it will give him, it will play him an annoying so I, sound. Yeah, I If his know blood this. sugar is too low or if it's too high, it will play a sound. Well, because you can set the, the range. And I didn't know this. You know, I didn't read any instructions. You know, that's just a suggestion. So, here I am. I, I just get laid down. You know, I go up to bed. I watch a couple YouTube videos. And then... Shut it off, and I'm about half almost asleep. I was like, what the hell? Like, I didn't know. Alarm I never heard. What the hell? And I look, my phone's going off, and it's like, and it says your sugar's high. Well, we got to change that. Because <laughs> I, I never set the parameters, the ranges. So when it spiked over 180, it starts blaring. I mean, so you don't have to take your phone and touch it over the sensor. It automatically, no. uh, it automatically rings. goes. Yep, that's the way my brother's is, and it's so nice. I like it, but what I'm finding the 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 issue that I'm finding with it is I get I check it probably 15 times a day, which is fine, but then I'm like, do I want to eat today? <laughs> So then, like, you know, I, I would, like, get the other day, I got up, and it was, like, 180, and I, in, in my mind, I'm, like, I'm supposed to be a 120 or less. And I know that because my thyroid's high, I should be a 170, 150, 170 right. range. So that that's where it's kind of, like, me a year and a half ago to right now, mm -hmm. you know, Okay, so freestyle slice sets of all of them. Are, I just got two cents for seventy-eight dollars, and the original freestyle sucks. Yesterday, my sugars were everywhere from four four seven to eighty Ooh. to forty-eight. My brain couldn't keep up with all the ups and downs. Yeah, four forty-seven. That's what it says. Wow. Yeah, sometimes the scanner, the the scan. I mean, it's a man-made product, right? So yeah. it's going to be all over the place. It happens. I've had scanners that were off, and then I do a finger. I, I think, man, that's really high. I'll do a finger stick, and I'm 10, 10 units off. Now you're, I mean, each heartbeat, your blood sugar can change each minute. It'll go up and down. Mm -hmm. I mean, my my scanner is is proved that. So, you know, with that in mind, I was like, okay. But when you're jumping that high, it could be a placement or the actual scanner itself. Because yeah. I've had those issues. The year I found out I was diabetic, it was 2000. And um, I was a tech support manager for an internet company. And the owner of the company <clears throat> was very active inside the, in, in the unit and everything, talking with all of us, keeping, keeping up with what was going on. And we were all in the break room, and he pulled out his meter and tested his blood at the table. And it's like there was four or five of us in there, and we're like, what is that? Because none of us had ever tested our blood sugar before. We didn't know what the machine was. And he explained to us what it was. He said, hey, he said, we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll test everybody. So he pulls out his alcohol wipes and his strips and all, and he goes down and tests everybody in, at the table. When he gets to me, it says ERR. And I said, what does that mean? He said, oh, let's do it again. He takes an alcohol wipe, wipes off my finger again, puts in a new strip, test it, ERR again. He said, that's not good, Rusty. I said, why? What, what, what is it? He said, my meter only reads up to 600. That means that your sugar is over 600 right now. He said, you need to go ahead and clock out and go to the hospital. 
And I'm like, what? I said, I feel fine. He said, yeah. He said, something's not right. He said, I know my meter's working because everybody else in here is normal and I'm normal. He said, yours is over 600 right now. <clears throat> and I didn't go to the hospital. I mean, I didn't personally, I didn't think that was a big deal. So I just, I did make an appointment with my doctor and went in. And that's how I found out that I was that diabetic. So you want to flip that over to the bigger? Hey. Uh, right. So a handful. The sensors, Carrie says, yeah, the sensors are awesome and actually it was helped to keep me alive. The alarm was going off and I wasn't waking up to it, but my son helped me big time. Tom said my blood sugar has always been 80 and 90. 90 is usually after a box of Twinkies. A whole box? box? Yeah, like I think about a, a Twinkie and my sugar goes up to 200. Listen, I could do a box of Twinkies. I like Twinkies. Uh, Carrie said, yeah, my fingers stick and senses are very close to the same number. Tom, oh, yeah, I'm type 1 diabetic. All those situations are totally different. Ooh, my insurance company won't allow me to get one of the meters the um kind of do the bluetooth connection or whatever yeah <clears throat> the the reason why i got it and and this is what i what i think and what my doctor thought was because of the cancer and checking it often so but my brother he got he's got the one you know that attaches to his uh it, side yeah the dexcom that's it dexcom and um and he showed it to me, and it's really impressive. And he said, you know, tell your doctor that's what you want. So, I mean, the doctor talked about it. He said, sure. He said, I'll put it in. He put in the request, yep. and insurance denied it. Yep. If you're if you're type 2, they will deny it. If you're type 1, without any other, like, serious things. And then I, I asked the doctor, I said, you know, this you know what can we do i said because i really like well, much rather have that than be sticking my finger a couple of times a day he said i'm not sure he said i don't I, he said i don't know everything about your insurance he said but you told me to call the insurance company and find out why and i mean i never did but i just know that it was denied we were watching tiktok last night then mind you peyton was in her feelings i don't know why well, so... Like, okay, I knew some of why. I think I got it because the boy was supposed to come. So we had... They, there was this plan, right? I think everybody knows from last week. The boy was supposed to come this week. And he was supposed to be here all week. Well, he ended up having a concert ticket for that Saturday. So he didn't come by. Then... You switch it. Then it was, oh, I'm not feeling good. I got to go to the doctor. And then it was, I got to get my prescription the next day. Then it was, oh, I, um, he had a, a interview or something for this internship that he's looking at doing. So he's like, uh, kept had things coming up. And I think that's part of her issue because she really likes this guy or so she says and he kind of left her hanging and i was like this kid's not making a very good impression on me that uh, really he was supposed to be here all week and then changes which is fine i'm okay with that but then but you had plans he had he had a lot of raking and stuff to do yeah <laughs> And, and he was supposed to take her back to school. Here it is, Thursday or Friday, Thursday. And I said, he ain't coming, is he? She said, I don't know. I was like, well, so mom and I had made, you know, went ahead and made plans to, to get her back to school because this guy left my little girl hanging. Anyways. So that was one thing. And then she doesn't feel good because we all have been infected by pollen. Yeah, if anybody's in the South, you know, when you walk out, when spring's here, I don't care what the calendar says, 
If this says today's first day of spring, no. Nah. You're in the 70s for a week, no. The first day of spring is when you walk out and your car's yellow. <laughs> yellow is green. I took my truck to the dump yesterday hauling off our trash. And you know the, the black bed cover I have that rolls over and clips on and covers up the bed of the truck? Yep. It, there was a puddle of water from, I guess we had a little bit of rain or something yesterday morning. But it's like green Hulk colored puddles of water on my bed cover. Yep. And whenever I'm you know, pulled the strap and rolled it up to get the trash out of the dump, and I went and rolled it back, it splashed all over my arm. And they're like, I'm going in the dark. <laughs> I hate pollen. I hate it. Yep. It gets it gets the best. And Tommy's Mustang is red, but it's red with extreme yellowish green highlights all over it. See, we're kind of kind of overfilled a little bit right. there. When so you wash yours, do you submerge or not submerge, but do the whole thing at the sink or yeah. So that you don't have any problem with water getting underneath the plate. So Once, what I do is I, I wash it, I take my scrubby and go over it, wash it, rinse it off, and then when I set it up, I set it up like Pac Man. Like an apron? Yeah, and, okay. and let it sit like that to dry in the in the strainer. I hand wash it, I don't know if it's too good. Right, yeah, that's what you I, just want to read these. these, these, these I whole, can't read them from here, but. Would you like to have this whole conversation? Go ahead. That's why. That's why you're here. You're I know, but it's funny. Lee, you how, tell us so we can. Here laugh. he goes, Lee. How is your health doing? You look great. No, no, I'm not hitting on your dad. I was like, God, oh, would it care? He grows. She goes, I know that's right. I was like, but he's. Uh, I say he, he can. She said, but is he doing better with the cancer? I was like, he can do. He can t- kind of take care of himself. But yes, yes, he is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I'm. He needs. He needs you and, and your mom. Yeah. Oh, he definitely can't. He definitely can't live with that. He definitely can't get anything on his own. Uh, but like, he can pee and shower and sleep by his own. That's all. Pretty much all he can do by himself. Health wise, we're a couple weeks out from from the first set of scans that would be considered surveillance. I'm gonna bring. I went flatline. This uh, is why, Dad. <laughs> I said kinda. Yeah, I, I get. Confused. I'll, I'll get confused a lot. Um, but so the 27th and 28th, I have scans. Um, and then the, tw- the 28th is the doctor's appointment to see how everything's going. So I feel feeling better. Like I actually want to get up and go do stuff. I've been walking a lot more, so that's been good. Um, so the big focus has been my sugar, trying to keep that low. So I've noticed when I go to dinners, whenever we go out to eat, you know, we, we actually have time to, and people that want to go out to eat with us. <laughs> so they're like, Hey, do you want to meet for dinner? And we're like, yeah, okay. I'll go and get a salad. Yeah. I look at the sandwiches and I look at all that. And I'm like, nope, nope. Because in the back of my mind, there's two things that are going to happen. Cubs going to come home from work with, with sweets, and I would like to taste it. And I don't mean like, I mean like. I she, got him good the other night. She came I home on a big Sunday, you know, and I, I had a little bit of it, about a quarter of it, third of it. And, but that was it. Rusty, I, I got him good the other day. Then, so I'm watching like the starches because, the white starches because of the inflammation in my legs, my knees especially. Uh, so that's been really good, um, trying to cut out the breads and the bosses, and that's so which I've been working pretty hard on. Um, so my sugar numbers have been the main focus. But like when I got this Libre A3, it's continuous monitor, so I can pull it up at any time and look and see the ranges when I ate, when I didn't, and then I'm like, okay, well, pre-cancer you're supposed to be at 120s. Right now with your thyroid high. That should correlate to the 170s. So uh, I look at it and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to eat today because I'm at a 140. I need to get low. But it really, I'm low. Right. So, and it's interesting to see what you eat, like for lunch, and then whether or not it spikes. 
And then how long does it take to come back down after you've had that? So that's been kind of interesting and kind of, you know, fun for the week. So I typically bring home something every night or every other day. Well, this particular day, I knew that if I bought something home, she set me up. Dad was going to want some of it. And I wanted to have this milkshake to These myself. These have the residual uh, caraway seeds, but I put the pump powder in it. Okay. So what I did was I made a milkshake that had Dad's arch nemesis because he hates it. Peppermint <laughs> in the milkshake. And I didn't tell him. I told him everything else that was in the milkshake. And I put it in the fridge and he came downstairs. And Peyton's drinking her coffee that I made her from work. And Dad takes a sip out of it and he's disgusted. I am finding it funny because I waited for the perfect opportunity to get Dad. Just for the fun of it. And I finally did it. And she's doing that because every day she comes home, I'm like, ooh, what, what, what kind of trick do you have? And then sometimes I'm like, it's mine. And then mine. she gets mad because I'm like, you don't need this. You don't need because your sugar's going to be out. And I'm like, I've been good all day because I know you worked and this is coming. <laughs> and like some nights when I have a really bad shift and I just want to sit and eat in my swallow, my shallot, my whatever you want to call it, I can't. I can't. So I put peppermint in it. That's not nice. Yeah. So she, I'm not nice. So she got me a good one. <laughs> Carrie said, what is the highest to read on the freestyle leap by three and the lowest do you know? Um the the alarm setting was two fifty. But it'll go higher. I've not looked at it higher. <laughs> but the highest Don't the, the alarm yourself. the alarm will go two fifty. Um, as a high, so I'd have to look on my phone real quick to see. All right, so we're, I'm gonna make mine. It's funny because with dad taking me to my they drive me around a little bit, he gets his schedule. And like one Friday, I didn't have school, and he came and was like, Yeah, that's how you go to school. I'm like, I don't go to school today, I told you all week. And then the one day that I had school, I was running late. I literally came down stairs, going to work, not well, going to school, and Mitch Match clothes, bawling because I felt so bad for going late. But then two days later, she's late again and doesn't care. I was not late, late. I still made on class on time. So a little bit of this on there. Freestyle 2 only reads up to 400 and as low as 40. Yeah, I'll look in a minute, Carrie. Um, I love ice cream, but peppermint, not so much. Well, pickles, it be what it be, it is what it is. Would you like to try a piece? I'm going to try one. Mm. The soaking it really did help. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not very salty at all. Yeah, I know the alarm, but the meter only reach out to a certain number and they say hi. Yeah. So we watch the TikTok and Peyton goes, Nolan, you and Carrie are actually like friends. And I'm like, yeah, we sing to the TikToks all the time. So Ruben will take. Thousand. Hit me up on TikTok later and let me know if you remember. If I remember what? There was no, there was nothing that I should ever remember. Not per se. I don't think. Then I'm gonna hit it up with some crow. Oh. 
Dad, that was for you. You had TikTok up on TikTok and you after you found out how high and how low it goes. Yeah, I'll look in just a second. Um there. Because my I set up on a second phone for this over here. So my phone's actually right there in front of Cup. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Wait. Oh. <clears throat> we will look right now. So, you don't want kraut. I'm, I'm going to try the whole thing, except for I'm definitely going to use mustard instead of Thousand Island. Okay. And then, we're going to cheat because of time. So, Swiss cheese. This is baby Swiss, I think. Yeah, baby Swiss, so that's why there's no holes. Um, Cub, will you hand me the phone and then you go nuke this for 30 Well, minutes. I have to think. It says urgent low glucose alone below 55 milligrams. Yep. High glucose above 290 milligrams. But th there's a high high. I got you. Um, the highest this one goes is 400. That's the highest, and the low, the lowest is anywhere below fifty-five. If that helps. Oh, oh baby, oh baby, Carrie. But see, I remember I was tonight chatting to home. I remember I got home from work. And I, I guess one of my fake lashes fell off while I was at work. So I only had one lash, like one volume lash on. And I was just, yeah, I just got home from work. I want to go to bed. And I guess I shower because I was shoulders deep in the, the water today. And he goes, no, where is your other lash? I was like, my lash. You don't want Swiss, you want the five bling cheese? Um, yeah. The Italian style. And Dad, I'll take a bite of this one. You will! Don't, don't be too happy. It's because I want to watch TV alone today, and I'm uh, using it downstairs. Or I'll use your room. God doesn't like crowd. You're putting the crap ton on. Sticking out along with a big onion. Just for the thumbnail. Oh, you have to do that too. Yep. Ooh. Hello, I'm Sammy. I was bringing the background of the heel for you. You want to nuke yours for about 45 seconds? Oh, good thing. Oh, that guy needs phone case. And that yeah, this phone case I got kind of crazy because you have to, it has a dart on the back. Let me get it. Oh, I got it. A little bit of dried parsley. Did you get Carrie? What yeah, I got her. I got her. I said what, four, four fifty? Um, it goes up to four hundred on there, and the lowest is fifty five. Yeah. Well, anywhere below, it's like it. Yeah. So I've got mine set for like, I don't know, whatever the low is, eighty eight. No, you have your your alarms to go off when it hits below fifty five milligrams, and at the highest at two hundred and fifty. Two fifty. Oh, does that look nice? Hold on, that's no, no, no. Bad presentation. You gotta get this stuff off to get the front of it. No, no, that's okay. No, it, no, no. it gives, it breaks up the, it breaks up the the whiteness. It's kind of like the drizzle. 
drizzle. I would. No, 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 no. You know how, like, yeah, you know how you put the drizzle on stuff to make to help break up the plating. No. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Have you been going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Absolutely. Well, if you meet Charles in the alleyway, you'll take what he got when he has a trench coat on. You got a... I got a, I got a dingle hopper. You got the dingle hopper for the uh, chopper. Let's say I got you a dingle hopper. Now, if Tom and Mike watch this, I beat you to it. You wanna, I don't know. You want to cut yours? Or? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I let this chopper sit in there a little too long, but. I think it is. Dad, this is not crazy. Mm. <coughs> Dang! Dang! That is... Oh, my goodness. That is a Reuben. Hell yeah, that was awesome. It is good. Touchdown! Boy, I like that. Mm. Mm. I will say. Soaking that to get all of that excess brine and stuff out of the meat. That, for my personal taste, you know, that was a big help. Hmm. That chuckle, it's not a an exact replacement for our bread, but it's pretty darn close. It's yeah. pretty darn close. Think it's a good job. The the sauerkraut is not overly pungent. Um. I mean, sauerkraut is one of those things I can eat it. I just never go out to look for it. So, I mean, like, this will probably be the only time this year I eat a sauerkraut. Just so because I don't, you know, search for it. My dad was in a while back, and, he, and I fixed sauerkraut. And he was like, you can cut this one off, Tom. I'm trying to hurry. And, okay. um... I fixed sauerkraut and he was like, how do you get that bitterness out of it? You know, like that, that pungent. Out okay, of it. drive four, three hours to come on. And um, the, the trick is teams. get the jar, cook it until your liquid's reduced, like on, but add an onion to it. And then I add black pepper or, you know, in this case I use the cow just to taste that's how I do it and it takes away a lot of that that punch mm -hmm. of sourness uh, so yeah oh dad I didn't tell you so do you remember swim captain last year okay. yeah yeah well if he ran into Courtney um on campus and Courtney was like, yeah, well, I'm trying to get Nolan up here for her spring break. Cooper said that if I decide to go up, to let him know. And me, him, and Pierce are all going to hang out. And I would tell Mom mm. that. Mom goes, it's you and, the, you and two swim boys. Are you happy? Huh? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I don't know if he's lying because the, the <laughs> camera's on him. I'm not lying. <clears throat> I mean, I will dip, I will finish this. Now, would I personally make this for me to eat at home? No. No. But having this right here already prepared, 
you know, I have no problem finishing this. Um, That's because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I it's just my personal taste. I don't really care for um, corned beef. The, the corned beef flavor is died down so much from soaking it that it's definitely palatable for me. The pungent flavor I normally get from sauerkraut is not near, I mean, it's not nearly as bad. A lot of times whenever I'm trying sauerkraut, people say, oh, you got to try this kind. It's, this isn't it's this, this is that, whatever. Just whenever I get like a Polish hot dog or you, something, and you put it on there, and it has that powerful punch. Yep. This does not really have that. And the, the, the reason why is one, it's jarred instead of bagged. Bag has, for whatever reason, the bag has more more of a punch, but it's jarred, and I mean you're reducing it all out, and then you're adding an onion, which absorbs and well, disperses. The, the sweetness of an onion would definitely you know, help It'll counteract have, it. That's what that's what I was looking for, not disperse, but counteract. So, hey, that was good eating. It is. This is this is a win for somebody who is looking for a low carb version. Of a Reuben, this is definitely a, a knockout. Yep, I, I enjoyed. I'm enjoying the crap out of that one. The chaffles, give it a try. You can use a waffle iron. You can use it and just mix it up and then drop it on your. People said top. so you like bland food. Oh, I, I you spice. saw what happens when he seasons it. <laughs> <laughs> I season and spice the heck out of my food at home. Oh, we know. Half a jar, <laughs> half a jar at a time. We know. Oh my. Okay, so Tommy, Tommy was he was in the clouds, and he goes, "Dad made dinner." I was like, "Oh, what did he make?" He goes, "I don't know. All I could see is the seasoning." I said, "Just, just vacuum it up." He goes, "Okay, I'm not that messed up. I'm not gonna vacuum it because then I'm not gonna have no food." And I was like, "Okay, just blow it off then. If it's too much, blow it off." But I thought that was so funny. He goes, oh, I don't, can't even tell what it is. It's good. It's just seasoned. It's well seasoned. And then I made a joke. I was like, and they say all oh, white people can't season. <laughs> yeah, I got that on my one TikTok about the the first shrimp boil we did. They don't know how to season them. And I was like, the only thing I showed you was dumping it on the table. I didn't show you everything that went in. Right. So then the next one we did, uh, but anyway, so mm. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. I want that. Just a few few tweaks, a little bit of love and care, and, uh, you know, soak the, the corned beef, change the water three times in uh, span about 24 hours. And, Bye, uh, Carrie. I'll text you in a little bit. Well, actually, I say the message already, but. And, uh, you know, we tried the chaffles, uh, the rye chaffles. It's pretty darn close. It's it's not the dark rye that I was that I usually like. It's more like the marble rye, um, kind of flavoring, but I like it. Well, the rye is definitely something that I couldn't handle. Yeah. I mean, that's that is such a strong flavor that I don't like. I mean, I can't even taste. Like I said, a little There's residual. Yeah. Taste, the caraway, I can't taste. It. It's good. 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 So this this was a great cook. I'm yeah. I'm completely happy with it. I'm not even upset to clean up. <laughs> oh, we have a no, person. not it. Uh huh. <laughs> this is how it works. Whoever cooked it and brought it out cleans it up. I just sat here on Rex's couch and talked to my lovely friends. I just walked in the garage door. You're his best friend. <laughs> you you helped. So anyway, we will get out of here. Good job. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. That was a really I'm slowly question. converting the guy into new foods. It's okay. Oh. I'm converting my cousin into like doing things like me and Pagan do. I'm slowly converting. It's the best. I'm opening your eyes to new stuff. To the better world where there's different flavors. And new food is always good. Absolutely. Okay, and guys. New food with friends is even better. You so, know, we do. Yep. So, y'all, let's have a great week. And remember, there's two rules in cooking. Did you have fun? Did it taste good? Rock on. Y'all are awesome. Have a great week. Have a great week, guys. See you guys next week. Stay safe, y'all.